Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a comedy, crime, drama film from 2019 titled Hustlers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It is 2004. Destiny, the newbie at a nightclub, gets ready for her first shift. Just when Justice, a co-worker of hers takes the stage, Destiny gets her first client. But things don't go as smooth as she thought they would, as the girls already have their regulars. With her insufficient skills, she finds it hard to win them over. After paying most of her earnings to the casino as a fee, she heads back home, where she lives with her grandmother. She wakes up at 3 p.m. to get ready for her shift. Before leaving, she notices that her grandmother has sold her necklace, so Destiny gives her some cash, to which the old lady responds with grateful words. Once at the club, Destiny is mesmerized by the main stage performance of Ramona. When Ramona walks past Destiny, she whispers to her, doesn't money make you aroused? After the show, Destiny joins the star at the rooftop, asking for a light. They end up having a friendly chat. The newbie opens up about not having enough skills and not doing so well on her first days. Ramona comforts her and suggests mentoring Destiny, showing her some of her moves, and even working together. Fast forward to 2014 shows a different version of Destiny, who is being interviewed for an article. The interviewer asks so when did things get out of control? And Destiny replies that Ramona was always in control. Back to 2004, on the following day, before customers barge in, Ramona teaches Destiny how to pole dance. Destiny once again is in awe of Ramona's flawless moves. She tries to give it a shot with the help of her gorgeous mentor. When they are both catching their breath and laughing, Diamond gets in. Ramona introduces her to Destiny and suggests she teaches the newbie how to give a proper lap dance. Back at the changing room, the girls are getting ready and chit-chatting about the stereotypes people have about strippers and how their real lives are different from the persona they show at the club. Destiny recalls the classification Ramona taught her, the three tiers of Wall Street guys. The ones at the bottom who don't do illegal work don't have much money, but the girls can get their way around it if they do. The ones in the middle get their hands a little dirty but don't cross limits. And finally, there are the ones on top. They come through the back door, get private rooms, and spend lots of money, and I mean lots, 10 to 15,000 a night. There were no cameras, and they could do whatever they wanted with no consequences. Working with Ramona made Destiny improve, and she made a lot more money. They also tightened their friendship bond. Destiny, or Dorothy as her grandma calls her, treats herself to some fine shopping. Ramona invites her over and shows her project of designing a swimsuit line. After introducing the future label, Swimona, we are introduced to Juliet, Ramona's daughter. Later that night, Ramona and Dorothy are having a heartfelt talk about their future aspirations and goals. We are then taken back to the interview where Dorothy asks how much of her story is going to be in the article. She doesn't want to give a bad impression about strippers and reinforce the stigma as she was simply making an honest living back then. Back to her stripper days, Destiny is making money, getting her own place, taking care of her grandma, and even going back to studying. She was studying at the counter when a man, Stephen, approached her praising her handwriting. Harnessing her sweet talk skills, she tells him it's probably because she doesn't have a computer. Later she's at the girls' locker studying on her new laptop. 2007 was the best, according to Dorothy. She met Johnny, her boyfriend, with whom she had constantly been arguing. She was making more money than Wall Street guys. Even managed to buy her first car. The last great night that Dorothy remembers was when Usher walked in. Everyone was dancing on the stage. Then 2008 happened. The worst financial disaster that happened in decades. Not the best time to get pregnant, but Johnny promises he'll take care of her. Two and a half years later, it's 2011 and Dorothy has a daughter, Lily. A final argument made the angry mother kick Johnny out and she was left alone with her daughter, no job at hand. She tried calling Stephen, the tech guy who offered her a computer back in the glory days. But it turns out he now has a family of his own. And so she crossed out the last person on her ex-client's list that is of no help now. Dorothy tries applying for a job at retail but to no avail. She falls into the vicious we want employees with experience, but we can't give you that experience loop. And so she's obliged to go back to the club that has changed a lot. All her friends left, and the new girls are rude. The club is more than empty. Even the house mom ended up in customer service. The customers don't want to spend money and the new girls do what they're not supposed to do to get the cash. Destiny is put in a situation where she abides by a request for cash. She feels disgusted with herself, especially when she realizes that she was scammed. The client didn't give her the promised amount. Devastated, Destiny leaves the champagne room and goes back into the club, when she sees her best friend she lost touch with years ago, Ramona. 
The two friends catch up over a cup of coffee and Ramona tells Dorothy what she has been up to since the crisis started. After the financial crash, the club wasn't the same. Mercedes found Ramona a job in a retail store. She is dealing with her own issues as her fiancé, Dragon, got arrested, and she can't afford a lawyer. Ramona's job at the retail wasn't going so well, so she went back to the club, but the latter wasn't pleasant either, so she came up with a plan. Spot potential customers. Get them drunk. Bring them to the nightclub. Push their credit card as far as they can and get a percentage of their spending at the club. But their praise weren't always so complying. Some even caught up with their scheme, and so they ended up losing money instead. That's when Ramona thought of giving her plan a little boost. Instead of simply waiting for their targets to get drunk, they would spice their drinks. Ketamine to lose their memory and MDMA for them to be happy and have a good time. And so her plan worked and the cash kept coming in. By the end of her story, Ramona invited Desperate Destiny to join her team. She joins them on their next hustle. Gary was the prey. While he is distracted, Ramona spices the drink, and they get to the club. Barely conscious, Gary grabs his wallet, and Ramona swipes his golden card. The plan was a success. After a big celebration, to be on the safe side, they decided to change their recipe. After the first cook knocked them out cold, the second one out of the oven was perfect. They decided not to fish for strangers but instead call some old friends. Didn't take them long to reel them in. Each day was a new trip to the club, it worked almost too well. Ramona got a new place, Destiny paid for her grandmother's house, Mercedes hired a lawyer for her fiancé, and Annabelle is feeling cozy with her cat in her new apartment. The girls even decided to outsource and expand their team. They taught the new girls their game. Hustling became their everyday business. Around Christmas time, they gathered at Ramona's house, along with Juliet, Ramona's girl, Destiny's grandmother, and Lily. Everyone was celebrating and exchanging gifts, a truly heartwarming moment. Back to the initial 2014 interview, Dorothy is now the one asking questions. She asks about Elizabeth's financial status growing up to justify their actions since they were in a bad place. Dorothy wants to stop the interview since she didn't want to be dragged into a situation that would make her badmouth the girls, who she considers her sisters. Just then, Elizabeth told her that Ramona had said the same thing the previous day. Dorothy is shocked. She clearly has a grudge against Ramona. She decides to continue with the interview. 2013. Everything was going well until Ramona's greed got the best of her. She decided that she didn't need the club anymore and would meet their clients at hotels. In spite of Dorothy's objections, a new girl joins the crew, Dawn. The redhead was reckless, sloppy, and a cokehead. An incident happens when Mercedes is with one of Ramona's clients. The drugged man thinks he can jump into the pool from the first floor, but he ends up falling onto the ground. While the girls drive him to the hospital, they try to reach Ramona, but she is busy bailing out Dawn. When Destiny comes back home, she finds out that her grandmother has passed away. Ramona comes to the funeral and comforts her. She also invites her to a gig that night to get her mind off things and get some money. Dorothy tells Elizabeth that at first, she thought there was going to be some kind of goal, and once she reached that goal, she would stop and start clean. The interviewer then asked if that's what happened with Doug. Dorothy denies knowing someone with such a name and calls Ramona a liar. Elizabeth goes further into unraveling what Ramona said about Dorothy. Mainly that Dorothy didn't just do it for revenge but she was trying to make friends. Her mom left her at her grandmother's and ran away. This made her have it tough. When Elizabeth asked what happened between Ramona and her, she turned off the recording tape and showed Elizabeth off. Once Elizabeth arrives home, she gets a call from Dorothy, who starts telling her the story. Ramona met Doug years ago, he had some family issues, and his friend brought him to the club to feel better. Destiny had a heartfelt talk with him, but to Ramona, he was just another target. The girls ended up maxing out his company's card and so he was fired. Doug called Destiny asking for his money back since he can't afford to pay his mortgage. When Ramona notices that Destiny starts showing compassion, she wrestles her down and snatches the phone, hanging up. Doug filed a police report since he had voice recordings from the reckless Don, who spilled the beans when drunk. Don was asked to help the cops with a sting operation by wearing a wire. Dorothy sensed that something was off and went telling that to Ramona in the car, she just says she is paranoid. Police had no leads because none of the victimized men wanted to confess, they were ashamed. In a newspaper there was an article about an architect who had racked up a $135,000 bill, after four nights of pleasure he couldn't even remember. Yes, he went back three more times. And so the girls were brought to the station. Ramona, while withdrawing the money. Mercedes, while visiting her fiancé in prison. Annabelle, while in her apartment and Dorothy at her home. 
Dorothy accepted the police's deal to guarantee a safer future for her daughter, Lily. Months after the interview, pregnant Elizabeth receives a call from Dorothy and asks about Ramona and what she truly said about her. Ramona's protege tears up when she hears that her mentor kept her picture on her, among the precious things she carries at all times. Ramona never spoke ill of Dorothy, she was always by her side. Elizabeth suggests that she should give her a call. Destiny pled guilty to grand larceny and attempted assault in exchange for zero jail time. Ramona was sentenced to five years probation. Mercedes and Annabelle served weekends in jail for four months and received five years probation. Ramona ends the movie with a heartfelt comparison. The whole country is a nightclub, with some people throwing the money and others doing the dance. Everybody's hustling. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.